Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Elle and I'm an interiors and lifestyle blogger and YouTuber. And today I'm gonna to be doing the DIY wooden vintage bench project wooden bed bench, console table, whatever you want to call it. So I've seen these wooden benches at the bottom of beds everywhere and I have lusted after this piece of furniture for donkeys. Um, if you go over to my Pinterest, you will see that literally every one of these like bedroom images that I have um, pinned to my primary bedroom mood board has one of these benches at the bottom of the bed. I absolutely love them and I've wanted one for ages. And really why I'm doing it now is because I've been inspired by the previous DIY that I did, which you would have seen a couple of weeks ago. I will link that down below, um, where I made over this vintage uh, dressing table. And because I brought that extra bit of warmth and depth into the room, and as I said in that video, prior to this, all my furniture is just Ikea furniture, which is perfectly fine if that is all you can afford all life. That is literally all we could afford when we were, you know, making up the room. But now as my style has changed, obviously my inspiration has moved, my budget is bigger, I am ready just to kind of bring in some pieces. I'm apprehensive though about doing a complete and total makeover room because as I explained in a most recent blog post on my website, um, there's a bigger bedroom makeover project happening where potentially we're going to be moving upstairs into the attic room and that's a whole kind of big thing so not necessarily wanting to buy new bedroom furniture pieces for a room that potentially won't fit when we go upstairs and whatnot but this bench is something that I will a hundred percent be taking out upstairs you know it's something that I wanted in the room for a while so I'm happy to do this DIY so as with most of my DIY projects on here the reason why I'm doing them is for two reasons the first reason being um, I can't find that piece anywhere here in the UK. I am very heavily inspired by American interiors, those of like Amber Interiors, Judy McGee and whatnot. I'll insert all my inspiration here with prices and whatnot. And yeah, can't seem to find this piece anywhere in the UK. Now, I have seen Milkmaid Benches, which is something that's very popular in sort of very Cotswold interiors, which I do love. And it's very similar to that kind of vintage American style that I like. Um, I want one of these pieces for my bathroom when we make that over eventually, but for the bed, I really wanted a longer piece of wooden furniture. The second reason is price. These benches are so bloody expensive. Like, they're so expensive. Like, and I can't understand it. As someone whose grandfather was a carpenter and has a dad who is incredibly handy with woodwork and everything like that, I just cannot see why these pieces cost so much of them profits. So I'm going to make my own today and I will be calculating up the cost of what it actually cost me to make this project material wise and I will be comparing it to obviously what it is in retail and doing a price comparison that way. With all my DIY projects though, I also take into consideration time and effort. It's all well and good saying that you should DIY it because it costs less to do it than buying it at a recommended retail price, but one thing I like to consider is the time and effort. Is it actually worth the time it takes to make this piece of furniture or this DIY or this decor piece? And is it also worth the effort? If it's not, you might as well just buy the thing, you know, at store. But if it is worth it, then why not DIY it and save yourself some pennies? It's gonna be fun and I hope you are gonna enjoy this. Um, we are going to learn together. We are actually gonna to learn together because I have a new tool that I wanna try out that I've never done before. I've seen many people do it. Um, I think this is the perfect DIY to do it. So let me go grab it for you. This is my tool here. It is a pocket hole tool. So this tool is designed to do pocket holes so that you can attach pieces of furniture together without seeing the screws. So obviously the screw goes up in there and it's out of sight, out of mind. You obviously have the side of the holes, which you could probably fill or you could leave as it is if you've got them in a concealed uh, space um, on the furniture. Um, I have seen many people try different methods when it comes to attaching the legs. I've seen people basically create a sort of um, V bracket with a piece of wood and then the legs going down and then attaching that to the top of the wood. 
I'm going to attach the legs directly to the piece of wood um, and do it that way. I'm also adding sort of a plinth to go in the middle of the legs. Um, the reason being for that is because I just design wise, it obviously will add strength to it because it gives support so the legs aren't bowing out as much as possible. But for me, it was just I wanted a little design piece on the legs like that. So let me go and grab my materials and let's get measuring and cutting ready. Um, I already can tell this DIY is going to be so quick and easy because it's literally metric cut put together. So let's see where we get to. easy to do. I tried with my circus saw which would have been much faster than my jigsaw but for some reason it just would not go through the chunky piece of wood so jigsaw did just fine. I realised though that I said I was going to show you the wood before I cut it and I didn't do any of that so my apologies. I will say all the measurements will be down below uh, for what I cut to size and also kind of the depth and everything like that um, and I will attempt to link where I can do but wood is wood so you could just get this um, exact from any sort of lumber yard or anything like that. Um, I will also say um, you don't have to do these exact sizes these are just the sizes that I did. So this is the leg so I've cut them at a 55 uh, centimeter height um, which is the exact same height as my bed frame. Um, for reference, I am making this to a double bed um, malm, which is the IKEA um, storage bed situation. Um, so this will fit quite nicely at the end of a double bed. Obviously, if you've got a bigger bed or a smaller bed, cut as um, what you require to. But as I was saying, cut this to the height of it, even though I want it to sit slightly below, because obviously, we're going to be cutting the wood on an angle and also we are going to be uh, rounding off everything. So I just wanted a few centimeters to play with everything before I went down that path. So that's the wood. As you can see, I chose ones where quite nice notches and whatnot. This one's got quite a lovely notch in it also. Um, and then this is the top of the bench. Um, so it's the same thickness as the legs, as you can see there, um, but just obviously uh, chunkier and wider. So I've gone for like 19 and a half, I think it is, centimeter wide. Again, I think we're down below. I've also got a really nice like groove um, starting to film here. So I'll probably be uh, chopping into that and making it a bit bigger and everything. Um, so yeah, all these pieces are cut to size. Oh, one thing on this piece of wood is I cut from the wrong end. So even though this piece has all the lovely notches in it, this end piece is branded. So we're gonna have to find a way to either sand it off when I do it, or maybe I just trim a little bit. Because again, I went for the exact same size of the bed even though I want it a tad smaller. Um, just so I had enough to play with in terms of curving everything and like that. What we are going to do now is cut the legs on the um, 10 degree angle I think I'm going to go for so that they sit like that on the wood. Now I will say I got everything at 200 and two, no, 2400 millimeters so it's two point, just under 2.5 meters um, in length. Um, both for the top and for the legs. I managed to get all four legs of one piece of wood and I've got quite a nice decent bit left over of the top piece that I could actually probably make that milkman, milkman, milk, 
milk person stool, <laughs> milk maid stool that I was talking about for the bathroom renovation when I want to go for it. The only thing I'll say about the leg ones though was this is what I'm left over with and this was the exact length I was thinking for um, the kind of bit that would go in between the legs, which I'm gutted about. Um, but potentially could I cut it in half and maybe do it that way? Um, but I kind of imagined if that was like the legs like that, it would be about here. Um, which as you can see, just a bit cutting off. Uh, so maybe could I go a bit higher and then obviously we'll see. I mean, it doesn't matter if I cut into the other piece of wood. Um, I bought it anyway, I'll keep it for scrap wood if I cut into it, again, for the other projects. Um, but if you weren't wanting to do that piece that I'm doing, you could potentially just get um, the whole bench out of just two pieces of wood, which is amazing. So we're now gonna move on to cutting the mama angle, which is where this bad boy comes into play. So it's got the 10 degree angle um, mark here. I'm not sure how I'm meant to do it. I'll figure it out. Maths was not my strong point. It was the one subject that I didn't get to grades in at school. Um, so degrees and stuff like that, I was like, how? How, what, who, when and why? Uh, but we'll get there eventually. So I will cut these off. In terms of cutting as well, I'm gonna be probably using my jigsaw for a lot of this stuff. You probably could use, specifically for this type of wood, you probably could use a hand saw, which would obviously be a lot cheaper if you do not have any power tools and stuff. What I will say is, hand sawing through this, you'll be there for a while. So I do recommend investing in a power tool if you plan to do more DIYs, but I just wanted to kind of touch on that point in terms of the cost, because obviously it's not calculated into this cost, because I already have the piece, but it's something to bear in mind if you're taking on this project and you, this is the only DIY you're doing. So we're gonna cut the legs on an angle and then we're gonna get on with the pocket, um, pocket hole toolkit. So I'm excited. <laughs> problem with this doing the pocket hole technique um the pocket hole thing didn't really work and i believe it's more to do with the angle that i'm doing with it combined with the fact that i'm not quite sure what i'm doing so it's not worked i've attempted to put some screws in though and then though they've gone in you can see it's a bit rickety it's not smooth it's not great so I think for the fact that I wanted these kind of like angled legs, I think if I had straight legs, it would have been different. But because I want the angle legs, I am gonna have to do some form of bracket. So I'm gonna have to get probably this piece because it's pretty much, oh, that's dead on that width. Eeeem. Get this piece basically, attach the legs to it, and then attach this to the um, unit and stuff like that. Unit, tabletop, there we go. Uh, so we're going to have to do that kind of method. So I'm going to cut this down a bit so it's not dead on, dead on, like it's a bit hidden. And then we will attach, uh, we'll do some proper holes like as we would normally do and then go from there guys.
finally got the leg sorted off the bench, but I'm happy with our progress. So this is what it's looking like. Um, yeah, it's hard to see. It's hard to see, guys, but it's getting there. Um, I'll show you an after once I've done the other legs, because trying to stand it while showing you on camera, it's just not gonna work. Um, so I created the A-frame with it. Um, there's a couple of things to know. Obviously, I was struggling with attaching the actual legs to the bed. I think it is because of the angle that I was attempting to do the pocket holes, which sucks that we were not able to sort of fully test out the pocket holes, but there will be plenty of more DIYs that I will be doing in the future that I'm sure I'll need a pocket hole for. So we've got plenty of practice coming. So not happening on this one, but it's happening on the next one. So one thing to note is these legs aren't exactly level with each other completely on the um, square base. So doing that bar bit across might not be completely straight. I'm okay with that though, because I think with it being such a kind of vintage inspired piece, surely yes, it would look a bit wonky and stuff like that, but we're gonna try much harder next time to get them straight on that side of the uh, bench. The other thing I forgot was when I'm sending them out, in order for them to sit flat on the floor, I've obviously got to angle them this side as well. Um, and I think this is the bit that was confusing me. So if we're going obviously that way, we've got to go this way in order to get them flat, which is fine. I'm happy to do that um, after, obviously, we've got everything sorted. Um, Hubby is also back as well. He bought coffee and a Danish, um, so I can get a bit of his help when I'm cutting the rest of the stuff down. So, I am gonna continue making the frame um, for the other side. Essentially what I did was just sort of drill two pilot holes in the piece, which I cut to 10 centimeters, um, marked the center, and where I wanted the legs to sit on the bracket. Attached the legs to the bracket, made two holes either side in the middle, and then screwed it into the base here. So it's coming along, it's coming along nicely. It is just, obviously, like I said, it's taking a bit of time and everything like that, which is fine. We are currently on about one o'clock in the afternoon. So I think what I am gonna do is finish off the leg situation, see where we are with that bit, and then maybe I will lead to distress it maybe next weekend or perhaps um, later on this afternoon. Obviously, it's Sunday and I've got work tomorrow, so I need to make sure obviously I've given myself enough time to sort of just relax, unwind, and get on with other bits and bobs ready for the working week ahead. So we'll cut that piece off now, that um, extra bit of wood, and we will go from there.
guys, it has been a hour or two, maybe more like an hour and a half since I last spoke to you. Um, so I put in the, me uh, the metal, <laughs> the middle brackets. Turned out beautifully, although this one is looking a bit wonky compared to that one. <laughs> um, but I um, attached these bits by super glue um, because I didn't think the pocket hole thing would work on this situation. Um, so they've been attached by suit, um, Gorilla Wood Glue. Um, been drying for the last hour while we had some lunch. There's still a little bit of movement there. So I will flip this uh, back over in a bit, but this is the bench so far. Loving her right now. Looking absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, things that I need to work on bench-wise uh, in order to get her completed. So, the main thing that I need to do this evening, the light's suddenly kind of settling. It's about, what time is it, about three o'clock? Yeah, just gone past three. Um, so, what I really want to do is get the legs sorted and flat. That's the main priority. Now, stupidly, I should have done this bit. If I turn this over gently, there we go. So, stupidly, I should have done this bit before I touched the legs, as you can see from a little bit of pen mark and whatnot. Um, I didn't because I was impatient, but, and also I didn't realize until Hobby pointed it out once I put everything together. Um, but yes, I need to flatten these off so that the legs sit on the ground. I also need to curve everything um, so that it looks nice and rounded um, and more kind of um, dowel like basically um, than this current situation. I also need to round off the corners on this bit and trim that edge off where the um, the writing is, which will get covered up when I stain it, but might as well do it now. And then the final thing to do today is just to uh, distress it. So for that, I've got my sander uh, with a nice gritty sand, which would be good. I also have a chisel and a hammer, which again, just going to be knocking across bits of it, just toughening it, just making it look like it's it's been around for a while, rather than a couple of hours. So. That is the plan this week. God, that's a massive bird out there. Sorry, I just got really distracted. Um, but yeah, that is the plan for today.
Good morning everyone. It has been a week since I last spoke to you, um, but the bench is complete. I let the glue do its thing. I have distressed it, I sanded it, and I am obsessed. Let me flip it the other way so I can show you a little bit. Ah, it's so pretty. So today is staining day. If you can't tell, it is a glorious day. It's actually gonna get to 18 degrees today. I'm actually out and about today, so I thought this was the perfect time because I could leave it up on my kitchen island bit while it's drying um, and basically get on with the rest of my day and not have to worry about anything. Um, so I'm going to start it now. Now I do believe it's gonna need one or two coats. Obviously this will be the first coat and then we will probably do another coat. Um, I would probably say later on uh, this evening and stuff, uh, but for now let's just give it a good strong one. The color I've gone for is a uh, dark oat in a satin finish, Ron Seal one. I think this would be brilliant. It does say recoat after one hour, touch dry within 20 minutes. I think, like I said, I'm just gonna leave it for a long time. In fact, when I get back, before I have to go out again this evening, I'll have time to do it. So, we are going to draw it. Don't do what I'm doing and attempting to look pretty to go out for lunch um, and do some staining. You're just asking for it, but I'm gonna go gently, I'm gonna go slow, it's all gonna be good. <laughs> guys it's the next day and the bench is in position I can see it now um, I've attempted to style the room to take photographs albeit somebody <laughs> somebody here wants to be in the photos today and in the video so <laughs> he's gonna be just sat here for the moment um, but we will get ready with the reveal I cannot wait to show you it guys like I'm just so happy with how it turned out so let's do a reveal in three two one <laughs> So that's the finished results with the bench. I am so happy with how they turned out. Dash. <laughs> um, it's just be <laughs> just beautiful. Like it's exactly what I wanted and it's perfect. 
I will say the legs are probably a little bit too much on an angle, however the front of my bed is completely boxed in because it has underneath storage so I think if we had more of a typical frame bed then the legs would be able to tuck in and I'd get more of that closeness to the end of the bed that I have seen in my inspiration photos. Um, I can actually fix that another day but I'm happy with it now and like I said everything's changing in this room so I'm definitely getting a new bed so let's see where we are with the new bed and then go from there. As I mentioned throughout this video I will link all the things that I used. I was about to say ingredients but it's not that type of recipe. All the products. I will also put here the average prices of what this bench costs out in the retail world and I will put my exact costs here. As you can see I was very much under what it is like my goal was about 50 pounds and I think I actually just went over slightly thank you so much for watching this video I do hope you enjoy it let me know in the comments below if you're gonna try out this DIY um, let me know also if there's any other DIYs you want me to try out on the weekends or anything like that. I am ready for more projects to get on with. Um, if you did like this video, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I am now putting out videos every other Monday. Um, so I'm doing a mixture of like maybe vlogs and DIYs, everything like that. Um, like this video if you did, leave a comment, all of that jazz. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.